Hey guys, what's going on? Paul from Hashtag Sports. So, let's get into a way too early roster prediction for the wide receiver position for the Buffalo Bills going into 2021. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. Now you guys all know the deal. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you want to be notified. Get to that bell. And thanks again for joining. Anything you guys need, go ahead and put it in the comment section. We literally read almost every comment and we try and get back to everybody. So let's get to the fun part of 2021's you know time period right now. And that is projecting what the rosters look like. And that's something that's always kind of hard to do uh, is to kind of guess where the rosters are going to land. Now the Bills have a bunch of wide receivers that are currently signed. Some of them you will know. Some of them you may not be too familiar with. But Mario and I kind of had this conversation last year as to how many wide receivers you really keep. We're going to target seven, right? Six on the active roster, one to practice squad, probably the safest bet. Um, I don't know if that's when you do roster proje projections like this, you don't really know how it's going to shake out. We'll try and do position by position, but wide receiver is obviously a big one. So let's look at that wide receiver position. Let's figure out who are the six guys that you're going to keep on your active roster. Who's the one guy that you're going to try and slide down to the practice squad? And is there more than one candidate? Uh, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. All right, so we're just going to work top to bottom here, uh, kind of walk through the depth chart a little bit and uh, talk about the obvious, and that's Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs isn't going anywhere. Um, I would imagine the same could be said for uh, Gabe Davis. So you got one, two. Emmanuel Sanders certainly isn't going to go anywhere. Uh, that is one, two, three. Of course, you have Cole Beasley. That's one, two, three, four. And that's where you kind of got to start pumping the brakes, right? Ultimately, you have three remaining spots because you've got Diggs, Gabe Davis, Emmanuel Sanders, and Cole Beasley. Now, the talk about Emmanuel Sanders is that uh, he brings to you another outside threat. And while he certainly can play that role, if you go back and look uh, last season with the Saints, he really did an outstanding job of supplementing kind of subpar tight end play there, right? Finding soft spots in coverage, staying open while a play breaks down. Breeze is really good at staying active in the pocket as plays break down. Of course, that's one of the big things with Josh Allen. So I expect a huge season from Emmanuel Sanders and he's probably the reason why you haven't seen any major moves made at the tight end position because Emmanuel Sanders does an outstanding job of staying open throughout a play. All right we're gonna walk through all the other wide receivers currently on the roster. Now, mind you, Buffalo could still add two more players to their roster. They've got 88 signed right now. They can carry up to 90. Uh, so they still have two remaining spots on their roster. If they're signed to league minimum deals, they probably would not impact the salary cap space. Salary cap is made up of the top 51 contracts. If you sign a guy for around league minimum, usually you're losing a guy and gaining a guy. It's a couple hundred thousand dollars difference. So um, if they're all league minimum deals, it that it's not going to impact the salary cap to sign two more guys. So let's look at who is remaining because none of these guys carry any real salary cap implications. So I, I wouldn't be concerned about that. But for your remaining three spots, here's your candidates. You have Isaiah Hodges, Marquez Stevenson, Duke Williams. Yes, still on the team. Lance Lenore, Tanner Gentry, Brandon Powell, touchdown Jesus, J, touchdown Jesus Jake Kumaro. Those are your remaining options for uh, your final spots. Oh, I forgot one. Isaiah McKenzie. Uh, Resigned Isaiah McKenzie. The interesting thing about this, though, is that, true, Buffalo did not retain Andre Roberts. But what they did do is they actually brought in a few guys with uh, punt and kick return ability that are kind of sneaky plays. So Lance Lenore is one. Uh, he attempted to return kicks for Dallas. I think it was back in 2018. That... Did not go well. He actually muffs a punt that uh, I think Arizona scored on in a preseason game. Uh, Brandon Powell has return ability. Um, of course, Isaiah McKenzie, uh, who's been on the team the last few years, he has return ability. So ultimately, you have to look at your three remaining spots, and you have to say, okay, how many return guys do we need? Now, that maybe that's your practice squad spot, right? You have one 
guy who's going to slide down to the practice squad. Uh, you can have veterans on your practice squad. Isaiah McKenzie, if he's released, could be re-signed to the practice squad if nobody picks him up. Absolutely possible um, because you're allowed to have veterans on your practice squad. So the conversation gets really interesting here. But let's hold on to the punt return and, and the kick return side of the business for now. Um, let's look at the remaining receivers without removing those specialists, right? Let's nail down who we think is most likely to grab spot number five for the wide receiver position. Well, if you were paying attention to Twitter uh, any time in the last couple months, you would know that our buddy Greg Thompson over at Cover One and even the Cover One handle was basically a stan account for Isaiah Hodges, and it's kind of hard to disagree with that. Um, Isaiah Hodges was your former fourth round pick, uh, picked right behind Gabe Davis. And one thing that was so impressive about that draft class was Brandon Bean drafted guys who can just simply catch. Right, So often when you see players, wide receivers specifically drafted in the fourth or fifth round, uh, they're guys who have little problems. Right, Maybe they're not the fastest. Maybe they're undersized. Uh, maybe they let the ball get a little bit too deep on them when making a catch. They all have a knock against them. Right. Well, Isaiah Hodges is not exactly a breakaway speed player. Uh, he's, not, he's not super physical. But one thing that you, that he can do that is just automatic is catch the football. And if you go back and watch any of his time in college, it's obvious Isaiah Hodges can just flat out catch. And if you're looking for another wide receiver, isn't that kind of what you're looking for? So I guess here's where the conversation has to go, right? If you were looking at profiles, you're looking at Jake Kumaro versus Isaiah Hodges versus Duke Williams. So Isaiah Hodges can just simply flat out catch. Duke Williams uh, has been on the team now for a couple years. You'd have to imagine this is make or break for him. Either he's going to make the roster or he's going to be released. And then Jay Kumaro, touchdown Jesus, was the catalyst, uh, according to social media, for some of the Aaron Rodgers friction in uh, Green Bay because Rodgers was frustrated that uh, Kumaro was, uh, was ultimately not retained. Right, The Bills ended up snagging him. Um, there was some friction there over that. Now, again, Jake Kumaro, the reason, the straw that stirs the drink, no, no, no. But it's probably just a one of a series of things that kind of frustrated Aaron Rodgers. Now, Kumaro had some mild success with Buffalo, and there's a lot to like about Kumaro. But if we're going to compare Kumaro to Duke Williams, right, the conversation there kind of has to be, well, what are you looking for, right? Are you looking for uh, a guy who's going to kind of be able to play inside and outside. Duke Williams, really, you're not going to ask him to play in that inside receiver position. He's primarily an outside guy, a little bit more physical. Kumaro is not as physical as him. You take a look at the dynamic of this wide receiver group. Do you want physical, right? Well, Kumaro kind of fits the archetype of what they've already done. So if we're talking about a, com uh, a competition between Kumaro and Duke Williams, Kumaro kind of comes out on top here, right? Duke Williams, unfortunately, just hasn't been able to break into the roster. It's hard to imagine that this year is going to be any different. So in the hierarchy, Kumaro versus Duke Williams, I have to imagine that Kumaro is going to come out on top. We're likely going to see uh, the final season with Duke Williams in Buffalo. Now, Kumaro versus Isaiah Hodges, now that's a fun conversation. Um, and that's kind of where I think you're probably looking at your two other wide receivers, right? So we have four. We're looking to keep six, but we probably need one returner. So Kumaro versus Isaiah Hodges is a very fascinating conversation to me. Now, Hodges missed the entire season last year because he was on IR. So do you have the opportunity to slide him to your practice squad with minimal showing in the preseason? Yeah, you sure do, right? You sure do. Um, I don't think teams are going to be so desperate for wide receiver help that they're willing to pick up a waiver claim on a former fourth round pick who missed the previous season on the IR and has yet to step foot on an NFL field when the lights are on. And uh, I think you're probably okay there, right? So if we're looking at top four, right? Just a reminder, Diggs, Beasley, Sanders, and uh, Gabe Davis. If we're talking Isaiah Hodges versus Jay Kumaro, uh, Jay Kumaro might be the guy here. Right? Maybe not. It, it is close between Kumaro and Isaiah Hodges. So let's get back to the conversation on kick returners. So Buffalo's done a very fascinating job with kick returners, right? We do have Tanner Gentry here in the mix in that slot receiver kind of conversation, but um, probably not the most prolific player who you'd want to see in a punt or kick return role. Again, punting is so limited now in the NFL. Um, you're really not keeping guys who are punt return specialists much. Um, 
although most teams still do retain that, you're probably going to, again, kind of see a, a transition away from that because the percentage of punts per, you know, per series is so low uh, in game now. Um, you're probably going to start seeing, you know, a shift away from that to a player who can contribute more as a wide receiver or as a running back or as a cornerback um, and not so much as a primary return guy. But Buffalo's done a good job here of getting in a bunch of guys who can actually return. Of course, we know about Isaiah McKenzie. Uh, he's definitely on the books to uh, return this year. He's probably your leading candidate there. You drafted Marquez Stevenson, uh, who in five games last year, I think averaged like 36 yards per punt return. Uh, let me double check that number. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Marquez Stevenson last year, four returns, 145 yards, 36.3 yards per return, and one touchdown. Again, only five games short in college season. Uh, prior to that, he was averaging about 27 yards per punt return, two touchdowns in 2019 for Houston. So Marquez Stevenson is a really fascinating player to add into the mix. Now, again, later round draft pick, so you have to, again, question whether this is a practice squad player or not. Pretty dynamic. If we're going to compare Isaiah McKenzie against Marquez Stevenson, fascinating conversation there. Well, now we also have to add in Lance Lenore, who's kind of kicked around the league a little bit as a punt returner. I think, again, Stevenson probably has a leg up on him. McKenzie most certainly does. Um, and then Brandon Powell is your other one. Now, Brandon Powell has had kick return um, experience, although I, I'm not going to tell you it's gone phenomenal for him. Um, he did it with Detroit, did it with Atlanta last year. Not bad, right? Um, does a good job. Right, about league average return. So the conversation becomes, well, which of those players is going to be active on your roster? Isaiah McKenzie, Marquez Stevenson, Brandon Powell, Lance Lenore. Which of those four? Well, we do know that when uh, building a roster, they this team does have a tendency to trust the veterans first. So I have to believe Isaiah McKenzie is probably your lead returner this year. As fun as Marquez Stevenson is, he probably is a practice squad candidate, right? So we get down to it. And what does that roster actually look like? Again, we're going to look at keeping six on the active roster, one to the practice squad. And here's where conversations get tough, right? So we know we're keeping Diggs, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, and Gabe Davis. You now have two wide receiver spots that you need to fill. Uh, I think it is kind of a no-brainer here uh, that um, Isaiah McKenzie is likely your returner given the history of being a McDermott. They like to trust veterans, even though Marquez Stevenson may come in at some point. Uh, McKenzie is here on on almost a league minimum deal. Um, he see, With that, though, real quick point of note, Isaiah McKenzie played almost as many, almost uh, half as many snaps last year as he did the year previous. Now, he did score more touchdowns in 2020 than he had his entire NFL career prior. So you could say that the efficiency numbers are through the roof. Isaiah McKenzie is a no-brainer. But the fact is that Isaiah McKenzie also played half as many snaps. Right. With that being said, I still have to believe he has got a leg up on the job. I would imagine Isaiah McKenzie is likely your returner and your fifth wide receiver. Uh, because McKenzie can spell Cole Beasley out of that slot role. Again, you start looking at things, you you know, you kind of imagine Emmanuel Sanders plays, you know, opposite uh, Cole Beasley on the inside, Gabe Davis likely on the outside with Stephon Diggs. Um, so you, you have to start looking at uh, flexibility here. McKenzie likely is going to get that. Okay, so now we're at five. Well, that leaves us with a couple more players to pick from. I have to imagine that Jake Kumaro makes this team. The skill set tells me that he's just a little too versatile to be ignored. Um, you could chance to try and get him on the practice squad. You absolutely could. You're going to have to put him on waivers to do so, but you could chance getting Jake Kumaro on the practice squad. But let's not forget, that's kind of how you got Jake Kumaro in the first place, right? Um, has he put enough on tape in order to uh, you know, allow another team to want to bring him in? Maybe not. But Isaiah Hodges is kind of a safer bet to slide to your practice squad, although that's a risk. Anytime you want to put a player on your practice squad, you have to put him on waivers, and any team can pick him up. Any team could say, he's mine now, and he is. There's no take backs. You can't put a guy on practice squad, see who claims him, and, or put a guy on waivers, see who claims him, and then pull him back. This is Major League Baseball. It's not how that works. 
So is Jay Kumaro a better bet? Like, if you're going to lose a player, would it be easier to lose Jay Kumaro? I suppose. For the sake of the argument, though, I'm going to say Jake Kumaro probably makes the roster. Isaiah Hodges probably starts the season out on the practice squad. Um, and then again, you you start seeing a, a movement forward. Now, that leaves an interesting conversation for Marquez Stevenson. Really dynamic returner. You put a draft pick on him, what are you going to do? Well, it is not uncommon for the Bills to have those late-round draft picks put on waivers and then slowly make their way to the practice squad. Um, I think that's sort of part of the interesting conversation. Could it be Isaiah Hodges over Jake Kumaro? Perhaps. Could it be Marquez Stevenson over Isaiah McKenzie? Yeah, perhaps. Um, You know, McKenzie could be a practice squad candidate. Uh, Jay Kumaro could be a practice squad candidate. Uh, Isaiah Hodges could be a practice squad candidate. But if we're picking the top seven, I'm locking in. Am I way too early prediction? What is this? June 11th. I'm locking in. Cole Beasley, Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, Gabe Davis. Jake Kumaro, Isaiah McKenzie, Isaiah Hodges is your practice squad player. You are going to put Marquez Stevenson on waivers. Uh, I, it is possible he could come back uh, as a practice squad. But just for the sake of the argument, that those are the top seven that I'm sticking with. Uh, could could you know uh, eight players be kept in total with a couple on the practice squad? Yeah, absolutely. But for the sake of the argument, that's what I'm sticking with. All right, Paul from Hashtag. Hope you guys had a great time. Don't forget, comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you soon. More Bills news coming along the way as we get closer to the season. I'm excited. You're excited. Go Bills. Uh, Thank you again to our sponsor, Mr. Rogers Homes. Uh, Of course, anytime you need anything, contact Sean. If you're looking to move to Arizona, contact Sean. Um, Everything you need is in the description of this video. Thanks again. We'll talk to you guys soon.